All right, notice is hereby given that the Board of Directors of the Green Mountain Water and Sanitation District of the County of Jefferson, State of Colorado, will hold a special meeting at 6 p.m. Tuesday, January 31st, 2023, at 13919 West Utah Avenue, Lakewood, Colorado, 80228. This meeting will be held for the purpose of conducting such business as may come before the board. This meeting is open to the public. Virtual meeting option. For those who may not be able to attend in person, the district will offer the option of participating in this meeting via video slash conference call. To attend, please go to https colon forward slash forward slash us 06 web dot zoom dot us forward slash j forward slash 895 3322 5776 or call 669-900-6833 and enter the meeting ID 895-3322-5776. To troubleshoot issues with the connection at the time of the meeting, please follow this link, https colon forward slash forward slash support.zoom.us forward slash hc forward slash en hyphen us forward slash sections forward slash two zero zero three zero five five nine three hyphen troubleshooting. If you still experience issues, email customer service at greenmountainwater.org and our IT staff will assist you as soon as possible. The district does not discriminate on the basis of race, age, national origin, color, creed, religion, sex, sexual orientation, or disability in the provision of services. People with disabilities needing reasonable accommodation to attend or participate in a district board meeting can call 303-985-1581 or email customer service at greenmountainwater.org for assistance. Please give notice as far in advance as possible so we can accommodate your request. Call to order declaration of a quorum. Jeff Baker present. Todd Hicks present. Dave Wickman present. Roger Wendell present. Karen Morgan present. All five directors are present. I declare a quorum. Uh, we'll close agenda item number one. Move to agenda item number two. Directors matters, disclosure matters. Anything to dis disclose, declare. No items, so we will close agenda item number two. Move to agenda item number three, approval of. Additions to and deletions from the agenda. None seen, I will close agenda item number three. We will move into public comment, limit of five minutes per person <clears throat> for past motion of the Green Mountain Water and Sanitation Board of Directors, May 11th, 2021. Members of the public wishing to address the board during the public comment period are asked <laughs> to keep their comments civil and related to the items in the agenda or to the conduct of the district business. Members of the public wishing to address the board will be recognized by the board to maintain proper decorum. Since the Green Mountain Water and Sanitation District Board values your input, we always offer additional opportunities for the public to provide comments by using the district email system or by phoning into our customer service in the event they do not get on during the meeting during the period set aside for public comment. Okay. Do we have anybody in the room wishing to address the board? <coughs> okay, I saw that hand first. We'll go with you first. Uh, state good. your name and then please state, you, state your name and go ahead. Sounds great. Uh, my name is Peter Zalachowski. Um, I've been here before. I think you're aware I'm a resident here in Ward 4. And, uh, I live adjacent to uh, the Ravine, Ravine's Open Space Park. Um, I wanted to start by noting that I have sent several emails to President John Baker regarding our concern of the Ravine's Open Space Bridge closures, the first on January 9th, and several others between then and January 25th. I have explicitly asked questions in both forums to be answered. I have explicitly asked for confirmation that these emails have, uh, were received. Mr. Baker has not responded to one of these requests. Under Mr. Baker's leadership, a special executive meeting was held on the same evening that myself and our community members and our children met with Mayor Adam Paul at the Lakewood City Council meeting. Regardless of availability of your lawyer, this was incredibly inconsiderate to myself and to my community members. 
and to your committee members. During this meeting, the Green Mountain Water, uh, Water and Sanitation District Board voted unanimously, unanimously speaking, to approve barricading all three bridges, when clearly the public does not agree. We would have liked to have been there when uh, to have had this vote placed in front of us. I am here to state my unequivocal disapproval of the Green Mountain Water Sanitation District for its approval of barricading all three ravines open space bridges. Green Mountain Water Sanitation has acknowledged the fact that the infrastructure within its district is aging and is urgent that it be maintained. <clears throat> it stated that this uh, it stated this to be a key contribution to the rising cost of water usage from its constituents. Spending sixty thousand dollars to barricade bridges that need maintenance is hypocrisy. Money being spent that could be used for maintenance to literally delay maintenance. Green Mountain Water and Sanitation District has stated that only the middle bridge is in need of structural repair, yet they plan on barricading all three. In essence, Green Mountain Water and Sanitation District is using the two sound bridges as political pawns for their gain at the expense of both the community and their, and their constituents. Green Mountain Water and Sanitation District has stated that they cannot prove ownership of any of the three bridges. Green Mountain Water Sanitation District has stated that they recognize their bridge easement locations may not align um, with the <clears throat> with bridge locations per a survey. It is my belief that Green Mountain Water and Sanitation District does not have the right to place signs that state the bridge ownership, that state bridge ownership and closure if in fact they cannot prove ownership. It is my opinion that Green Mountain Water and Sanitation District, District does not have the right to place barricades on bridges that they cannot prove ownership. Mr. Baker, I'd like to remind you and the rest of the Green Mountain Sanitation District Board that you are elected officials whose duty is to work in the best interest of their constituents. Your actions are clearly not in our best interest. I will do all my power as a member of the community, community to prevent these barricades and to work towards reopening the bridges for pedestrian use. This will include, include seeking legal counsel. Please reconsider your actions and work with the city of Lakewood to keep all three bridges open to pedestrian use as they have been for the last 50 years. Thank you. Okay, here next. Hi, I'm Katie Sostowski. I also spoke at the previous board meeting. Um, I'm here today to say how disappointed I am in what's happened in the last few weeks. And how hopeful we were at the last meeting when we came and we stated what was happening and communication had started between you and Lakewood and it's just unbelievable. <laughs> and I uh, second what Peter said, this is very important to our community. We are the community. You are voted in by us to serve our community. And you're not doing that. When you're stopping kids from going to school, you're stopping access from open space. And it's the reason we move here. That's the reason people live here. It's huge. And I just feel like the, the lack of thought or heart or care, it's just, it's very upsetting. So I'm here to say, I'm going to continue to show up and we're continuing to work with Lakewood. And we have been, and we've been talking to them and you, and we will continue to support that, but go back, cooperate, work together. We really need this. Our kids need this and our community of hundreds and hundreds of people who use this space, we, we need this. And to see barricades go up, it honestly makes me feel sick. So that's what I'm, I'm here to say, please, please go back and talk to Lakewood again. And we are saying the same thing to them. We're saying, please work <coughs> together. Thank you, anyone else? Yes, sir. I'm Greg Cannell in that neighborhood. And uh, I have a brief comment, and that is we've heard about negotiations, but let me remind you that negotiating is give and take and listening. And I don't know when I see emails from the city, when I see emails or correspondence from y'all, it doesn't seem like that's happening. So, you know, let's try a little harder, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the room? Yes, sir. Yeah, my name is Jason Ventura, and I live in the same neighborhood as everybody speaking here, uh, just down the street. I dropped everything I could to be here tonight. Um, you know, even though I'd rather be with my family, you know, kind of hanging out. But uh, we moved in 2014 to our current house, and uh, in an area that was, uh, you know, 
we wanted to be the change to bring to this area where people were aging out of their homes, uh, things were getting run down, and we chose to stay here. <coughs> Um, just last year, we did an addition onto our house to stay here because we utilize the open spaces. We walk our dog every day on what we call a short loop down the hill on South Welch, through the open space, across the northernmost bridge, and up and around. It's about 0.78 miles. It's perfect. We get some fresh air. And now that that bridge is going to be closed, you know, it, it just kind of sucks because we, we are the new generation that's going to live in this neighborhood and you know, just echo the uh, the comments made before. And I apologize; I don't have anything prepared, and you know, kind of following from the periphery here. But just wanted to um, make it known that I'd rather be a million other places than here. Uh, but I'm choosing to be here because it's so important to me, my family, and the community. Thank you. Anyone else in the room? Yes, sir. My name is Derek Magnus. I'm also a resident. <clears throat> I just urge you guys to. I know you made the unanimous decision to move forward with bidding the barricades last week, but I'd urge you to delay that or at least on a couple of them if you can, while we kind of work with the city and try to figure something out here. I know you've already sunk costs into design and all that, but give us some time here, please. Okay. Thank you. Any, anyone else wishing to address the board? In the room, anybody online, please raise your hand. Okay, going, going, and gone. All right. Um, we're going to move into the uh, agenda item here. Looks like you've got a hand going up. Oh, Dave, you're recognized. Please address the board. Dave Burner. Thank you, Judith. Dave, you can go ahead and unmute. I thought I was unmuted. Sorry about that. I assume you can hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I have a great deal of sympathy for the very small but well-meaning group of citizens who are concerned about um, the city open space area and the bridge or um, sewer support structure, whatever you want to call it. Um, I too live in the area, but I have a different perspective, and that is that uh, members of the board have a fiduciary duty under Title 32 to represent all the members of the district and not a small few. They have a legitimate concern, but in my view, it's with the city who could easily solve the problem. What those that have spoken previously need to understand is that it would be a violation of the board member's fiduciary duty to spend money to maintain a bridge. And I've heard from a number of people who are concerned. They don't live by the ravine. They live elsewhere in the district. And they're sufficiently concerned to be asking the question, could they take action against the board if the board were to act absent their fiduciary responsibility? I'm with you guys on your vote from last time. Um, and uh, I'll be happy to assist in any way I can to continue to try to explain what the realities of the law are to people in the community who don't have any reason to know what it is. And I appreciate their perspective. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else online, please raise your hand. <clears throat> okay, I'm not seeing anybody. Anybody else in the room? I'm going to close out public comment and we're going to go into agenda item number five, which is director's matters. Um, and we're going to have a, uh, we're kicking off a Kaizen event tonight. Uh, Kaizen is a term used for continuous uh, improvement of processes within a business organization. So tonight we have, um, we have Doug Pavlich um, who works our finances. We have our district manager, Jeff Thias. We have Nathan, who I wanted invited into this. Uh, Nathan works in analytics, and I, I'm a big believer. I think once you're, when you're trying to understand how things work and operate, you have to have analytics. You have to be able to get into that granular detail of your operations to understand things rather than just taking a swing at the fence, which I'm not saying that's what we're doing. But uh, for myself, I like to see... Uh, when we report speaking of fiduciary responsibility, we all approve 
not only the monthly budgets, but the annual budgets. And we need to be able to understand what, what's going where and to what degree. So with that being said, I will um, kick this off. And I will say that tonight we're going to be looking at starting at the high level. Um, this will be the first of probably several meetings where we want to we want to formulate the things, the the questions, the things before the directors that come up monthly, and then when we go to annually approve the budgets how can we come up with a better process flow for the staff to understand what we're doing, understand what we're improving over all the lines of business of the district? Does that make sense? We just went through the budget. You had a lot of questions all the time. So those questions should be answerable. You should be able to see a dashboard and see things in real time for we're talking about salaries. We're talking about um, capital, like our, the vehicles, infrastructure, assets, capital improvement, um, pretty much any of the lines of business of the district, we should be able to understand. And, and then once we understand it, then we can approve additions to or deletions to the budget. So that's kind of why I wanted to bring everybody in here. And, and, it, and it kind of gets to, I've been, I've sat on this board long enough to know that it gets to be very uh, turbulent for the staff, especially around times of budget, to try and like, well, why is this? Why are we doing that? Or even monthly, what's this for? What are we doing here? They're all good questions, but you know, it really should be something that we should be able to look at and understand and see in real time. So here we are. So. What I'm going to, I guess this is my board, I'll take over here. Have you been in uh, New York Six Sigma events before or times in? Um, it's lean, but... So we're just doing like a lean blitz type thing right now. So meet lean blitz means we're just do it now. It's going to be, usually there's a lot more protocols and, and ways to go about this. So I want to start out with, we're, we're talking about, and can everybody see this? Okay, so we're going to have um, we're going to have two categories here. We're going to have our uh, annual budget. You want to use a darker marker? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. So much better. I've got a I've got one here. So well, aren't those dry erase markers? You might want this green one. That works good here. Annual budget. And then we have the monthly. Uh oh, I'm working at a uh, reduced brain capacity here. So, so in front of you, all of you have, and you all have, you're all stakeholders. And Doug, I was hoping you could be in the room, but uh, everybody's a stakeholder in this process. So, think about what you, your questions are like things that come up every month and then think about what you just went with, went through with the annual budget. And then what, what were some of the problems or what are questions you have or improvements or, you know, what are you, what do you like? You know, start, you guys take your stickies and you can come up here and just start putting them up here and we'll start looking at that. Now, what, what this will all, um, where I'm hoping to get this to is breaking this down into the lines of business. Jeff, when you say 
the issues that we like, you mean things that are concerned to us related to the business operations and the budget? Strictly to the budget, yeah. So if we have, what are the different lines of businesses that you guys, what do you, what do you think the district looks like? You know, I, I was just giving examples. Like you look at staffing, you look at capital and improvements, infrastructure, <clears throat> you know, all these different things. What, what would you consider lines of businesses and then put those down there too. And then we will probably start taking the comments from the stakeholders, we'll, we'll pull from these and we'll apply into and identify what the different lines of businesses are. And then you know, collaborating as the board and the staff. And we've got uh, Nathan here with us. We've got an analytics guy. I should have introduced him. Does everybody not know Nathan or do you need no idea who he is? Okay, Nathan, do you want to introduce yourself and uh, to everybody, please? Uh, sure. Um, my name is Nathan. Uh, my name is, uh, I've uh, been sort of keeping uh, tabs on waterboard stuff for you know, a little over a year now. Uh, been uh, uh, a candidate. At one point for okay. the board, uh, did not succeed, uh, but uh, have been essentially trying to, uh, you know, make uh, being aware of these issues something that I uh, take some time out of my day to do. Uh, so professionally, I manage a team of data analysts at Farmers Insurance, where we put together uh, we pull data and put together dashboards for the agents to use to manage their agency's performance uh, and try to uh, hit their uh, bonus program objectives and such. So, uh, you know, uh, a lot of that comes down to, you know, not just pulling the data and having that for us nerds in the back, but also trying to uh, process that data into a way that's going to be useful for actual decision makers to understand okay. what's going on. Gotcha. Uh, so I would assume that that part is why uh, I'm sitting at the table tonight. So he also gave a presentation. He's been working for several months as part of the Denver Water Contract Committee. He gave a presentation uh -huh. about that, so he's been here before. <laughs> I so, thought I'd recognize him, but I wasn't. Can you just kind of give the audience, you know, your opinion on why analytics are important and why analytics are, you know, useful and when we're talking about, you know, working budgets and <clears throat> trying to understand or create a process or, you know, et cetera. I hope I'm sure. Yeah, no, uh, I mean, I think it's just a matter of everybody talking about the same thing. Uh, when you have a piece of analytics or a dashboard or something like that, the conversation is taking place around, you know, it's no longer a conversation of like, you know, for example, uh, you know, whether or not someone thinks this is or isn't a valuable thing to spend money on or, uh, you know, a lot of uh, subjective dicey or territory, it becomes a conversation that's rooted in you know, okay, here's what we are doing this year. Here's what we were doing last year. Here's why the difference exists. And, you know, an actual discussion over the direction uh, that things are going can take place. Uh, whereas, you know, otherwise it's just a bunch of people with opinions uh, about things that aren't being necessarily expressed precisely in terms that are actionable for people. So, you know, for me, I would say that's the, that's the main draw of analytics. That's why I like working with analytics is because it really contextualizes large problems into numbers that uh, people are able to have, you know, discussions over where everyone's on the same page and everyone's looking at the same facts that everyone agrees on. So, uh, you know, I think the first step to any sort of large discussion, especially on a budget matter like this, would be getting a uh, single uh, source of truth, essentially, that everyone's operating off of uh, to make that conversation something that can be productive rather than just sort of a back and forth on values and whatnot. So do you, kind of how I've set this up, and this is, 
pretty high level. Does this look like a good place to start with? You know, we can go ahead and post up ideas. Um, you've seen the, they have this thing called like a kill chart, right? We, we can then move into a kill chart where we take everybody's ideas and you can kind of like how important or are they good or bad? You know, you kind of move them closer to a center target or towards the, the quadrant, right? So, and it kind of allows us to discuss ideas questions you know we're talking about refinement or finding that truth right so everybody gets input everybody is an equal stakeholder and then we kind of look at that and then we'll just kind of keep trying to move these ideas either they get to the quadrant where we're intersecting right where yeah these things are important or we put them in a kill box you know and then what's left is these ideas are then captured to go forward into the next stage of the process is that Seem reasonable? All right, so with that being said, I mean, you guys can kind of see this here. Think back to when you went through, especially the annual budget. Like I said, I've sat in on this five times now and it's, it's so frustrating for me because the staff tries to anticipate what we want and that's crazy, right? It's like they're trying to read our minds, five individuals. And then they're trying to provide the manager with that information. And that's not fair, right? You have to be able to be very, you know, like you're a you know, CFO. You have to have that truth, right? That is, it reverberates across your line of business and all those categories. You, you understand what I'm saying and why that's important. And if you had somebody over you, they, you didn't know what they wanted and then you're just having to supply data or information and you're not sure if it's going to take or not and especially when we're trying to do all these other things as a district this thing seems to the term is derail board meetings because we get wrapped around the axle especially around annual budget time when we should be focused on trying to support the district as a board rather than asking a thousand questions which are good but it's like we you know now's the time Let's create the process. So, okay. So everybody has a, you've got stickies in front of you. You've got the, think about this. What do you think are the lines of businesses? I mean, what do you think the district is? Does that make what I'm saying lines of business? So. <clears throat> I mean, all I think of right off the bat is water and sewer. Well, okay, so else? we've we've got you know you got water and sewer, you've got uh, equipment, you know, you've got infrastructure, you have staff. Do you break it down into greater detail, like equipment? mechanical equipment computer yes. equipment yeah i mean this is all i'm just giving you an example that what do we want to see as a board for the manager to create a dashboard that he understands what we're talking we're all nathan said coming from a common truth we have to define what the common truth is so the manager can explain that to the staff and then when we're talking about operating parameters we're always talking the same thing so in other words, basically give staff some clear guidance on what sorts of information needs to be provided as to their budget items prior to meetings. Right. So I'm going to give an example that kind of stuck out in my mind. We had, I don't know how many vehicles we have. I mean, if I just saw like a whole page, we have a whole page of vehicles and I'm just Jeff Baker, the facility guy, but it's like, I used to have to justify how you know do i need that many vehicles does it cut insurance and maintenance and all that are we using this or is it is it there's need to have and there's nice to have and that's what always got thrown in front of me here which which is it and then if it was need to have i had to justify why i had to have it and certainly if i had to go off and request say my budget i'm just using an example see because I like simple numbers. Say my budget's a hundred thousand, and if I'm talking about a new vehicle, like what was that one vehicle that was pretty pricey? That um, 
Was it a vacuum camera? truck or something? No, the, this year is a, is a, is a camera setup. Was yeah. the most expensive thing. Was it like 500 pounds? Or... Well, in the past year, we bought a, a, a vac truck oh, that yeah. much, but this year we just um, got approval for capital for a, a camera system. So what I'm saying is, is what, yeah. So yeah. camera system, it's pricey. CCTV. For yeah, Google CCTV. So we said, <laughs> To me, it's like it's shocking because now you're in the middle of the budget and you're like, oh, how do we? I'm, I'm I'm asking Jeff for a business case, and this is where it gets clunky, right? And uh, I think if you have budget allocated for these different lines of businesses, right? Like the district should have X amount of money needed for each one of these things that they operate in. And then someone like Nathan, they, you know, when you create these graphs, you are above or below the line, right? If you're targeted over 12 months, that spend rate for your line of business, you're either below or above or on, on target. You're, you're in a, a band that's acceptable, right? Plus or minus 2% was my, you know, what I had to work with him. He started going out the other way. You know, that's maybe something we like, well, what's happening here? Why is that? That kind of shows you there's a, an issue there. And what is the issue? We don't know. But it's a good, that's a good point to start asking that question. And then we would start understanding the analytics of all that, right? And, and that's like, okay, do we, and that is a lot. Like you have this many pieces of equipment, but what does that mean to the board right now? And I'm just using that. It's not by no means my beating up on it. But to me, it's like, well, why do we have that many pieces? Why do we need a new piece? You know, I, I, I'd like to be able to see, you know, we used to have to give projections like we could only replace vehicles based on certain condition, condition right, of the vehicles, mileage or maintenance is becoming greater than, you know, it's not worth holding on to anymore. It's critical to the operation of the district. You know, I mean, like we have to have it when we need it. So those are the kind of things that if we kind of create the process and the boundaries now, then I, I think it, it smooths out the road down the road for us as we're going through the monthly and annual understanding of what we're approving. Can I, can I ask, if I'm open to this, I just don't know very much about it. I, printed out some of this and tried to understand it a bit. But, you know, I welcome this. But I just want to ask Mr. Tyus, if I could, do you, and not picking on the vehicle issue, but it's a good example. It's something I'm a little bit familiar with. Do you feel without this process, you have a good sense of where you're at with these vehicles, what you need, what the projected costs are? Do you have a, like an understanding and a feeling of it all as it is now? Well, yeah, I understand both processes because I, I spent 12 years at Coors learning all, all this terminology under me. You know, we, we, we live and die for all lean manufacturing. So, so I'm very familiar with Kazon. Even, you know, this, the document it set forward actually goes into the domain, define, measure, analyze, and group control. Very, very familiar with that. But, you know, that takes a lot of time. So you know, as you scroll down with Kazon, you get into 5S. So 5S stands for sort, shine, standardize, sustain. Um, and so we, you know, I get, I, I've done it so long. So I started in 1999 doing this process and I really enjoyed it. We, I won many awards at Coors and water and wastewater treatment. Water and wastewater treatment, if you tour those plants at Coors, they won all the awards for quality safety based on new manufacturing in asset care. So when I started here, naturally, I, I was so used to it. And keep in mind, I implemented that too at Arapahoe County Water and Wastewater Authority, where I worked for seven years. Um, you, you can talk to those guys too, because I always talk mean with them. But when I started here, I could see, you know, the, the, the shops are 5S, you know, the, the offices are continuously 5S. There's this continuous improvement. And we again, have, 5S means what? Um, it, it basically is an organization on how things are set up. It, you know, the S is stand for like sort, shine, score, standardize, sustain. That's part of, you know, that document in front yeah. of you. So, so yeah, and then, you know, case on like, you know, Director Baker and I always go back and forth for continuous improvement. So we always look for ways of continuous improvement with any, as you go through this, you know, it's from all levels, you know, whenever you implement any type of lean process, it, it covers all levels of employees. So, so 
So Green Mountain Water has done an awesome job of doing a lot of these things automatically. Well, that's and, kind of what I'm asking. Yeah. You just have a feel with without this, do you have an understanding of where you're at with not only this equipment and these vehicles, but the, the operation in general? Oh yeah. Are you being shocked daily by by some outrageous price tag on an item or how are, I, I don't have a sense of how you know. No, no, um, we're, you know, everything, you know, as we go through this, it's all continuous improvement. So as we keep working this with and, and working all the way at staff levels, there's things will come out no matter what. And and naturally a lot of, you know, when you first implement these type of situations, a lot of staff goes, oh, we've been doing a good job, but you know, continuous improvement is nonstop. I mean, it, it never ends. So I it, jump in there just for yeah, a second. So when you're talking about continuous improvement, <laughs> Jeff's aware of it, the staff's aware of it, but we're not aware of it. So how do we measure, right? We I mean, how what are we measuring against? See, we don't know, so we're not sure. So we we have our own opinion and perspective. In the meantime, the staff is working on that's why I'm like. You know, you got to quantify and qualify, right? What are you doing? Where'd you start? What's the delta? Are you getting better? Are you getting worse? Those are metrics. These are analytics. These are things. They're, this is how you control what you're doing because they're it's quantifiable. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not trying to challenge it. I'm just curious to understand it better. Are you the staff is already naturally implementing these ideas, or do you have it formalized? No, we, we so lean. We do not have the lean principles formalized through staff with their with the actual training. The um, they do the the, the asset care program um, does use a lot of lean principles that's covering 5S. And then as we go through this exercise, you'll see we'll improve, you know, we'll improve the um, the communication with the board, we'll improve um, educating um, what is done in the in the processes, what, what we own, and and then also the board will be able to um, see what they, you know, especially like business cases, like Director Baker brought up, hey, I want an actual business case. And then we set these control charts or parameters, you know, they're, it's called critical parameters, like Director Baker was just talking about on, on these trucks. And so we have a, you know, we, we do have a list of vehicles by age and mileage. We do have those type of documentations. And then it be, kind of becomes this automatic system where, you know, here's the list of vehicles, here's, what, here's the justification, here's when they're bought. Here's what this vehicle does. You know, here's, you know, and then when you get a contingency improvement, and then you're like, oh, wait, wait a minute, we we have a new type of equipment, so we can get rid of that vehicle and we'll save money. It's kind of like um, when we bought the Mini X, and then we we bought a a greater this year to go on it, so it it becomes more things become more efficient, part of that continuous improvement, and then you're able to work more effectively. So as as we document it, you'll see it better and you'll, you'll see you know more explanation and budgeting and also you'll be able to under you'll fulfill the understanding of the process for for all new boards because when you know six years down the road when you get a new board this process will be there it'll say okay i see this is the, what, what capital was spent this is the priorities you know like master planning is a big one the spreadsheets we're working on with director morgan and director baker are huge you know because they take that all that documentation from the engineering master plan and they put it on a spreadsheet and they actually list the cost. And like Director Morgan said, it gives you a time frame of how many years you have, like, you know, like last spreadsheet was $80 million over a period of like 10 years. So, and then you can plan the rates. So everything kind of starts to correlate. So one last question, I won't beat a dead horse here. I, what I know about the operation so far in my half year is we've got some pretty good um, IT people, for example, that can analyze that system and tell us if we need computers or whatever. Do we, and not to beat up on the vehicle thing, but do we have people, mechanics, for example, that, that can look at these vehicles and say, yeah, it's 10 years old, it's doing this, it needs to be replaced. Do we have that kind of expertise, for example, in the vehicle department? Yes, we do. And like, you know, Tyler, Tyler and Jason, used, Tyler used to work for General Motors and Jason used to work for Toyota and they're certified mechanics. So what I'm getting at is this is great. It sounds like we're gonna have all this mapped out on paper, but you know, I hope we have the expertise 
somewhere in the organization to address the pipes, the vehicles, the okay. computers, and all that. Yeah, well, so okay. we have certified people, computer certified people, water distribution certified, huh? wastewater collection certified, backflow prevention, um, GIS train and asset care train, and, and actually certified in CDL drivers. So great. We have a lot of skill. Thank you, Mr. Tyus. Thanks for educating me. So. All right, so it's okay. We didn't just start listening for answers. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just start, you know, remember what your questions, what you were thinking during the annual budget or when you're at the monthly level. What are the things like you're like, oh, I kind of wish this or I kind of wish that or I like this or I hate that, you know, now's the time to kind of start putting it up there, see what sticks, literally. So. Is it one idea per sticky or we can fill the sticky up? Well, like I'm doing lines of business, I'm putting all what I would consider lines of business on there. I guess another thing, things that are controllable. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, these people listed as participants, are they participating in this exercise? Doug should be. Go ahead, you can tell us yours, Doug. <laughs> Oh, that's a whole story in and of itself. Oh, that's good. Oh, boy. Yes. Okay. Oh, I'm my It's got to be absurd. Talk about performance. It's got to be of certain value when it hits the ground before I go down, <laughs> or it's dead to me. <laughs> I no I know longer go down for pennies and things. Yes. Thank you. 
I do have to be careful if I talk too much about water business. Eating is a And I am famous for us. I know this. <laughs> so what's, what's the point of having feet if you can't step into it? That's right. That are about traffic worry needs. So I think they're going to name me one of these days. But uh, talk about the water that we see. You're right, Baker. Would it be okay if we could take a take a picture of that after the last sticky note? Would it be okay to take a picture of the board after? We're going to keep this board. This is kind of a keep kind of a living document. We'll kind yeah. of keep this thing here. It's okay if we take a take a picture. Absolutely. Say we're looking. Okay, if you take a picture, yeah. then, yeah. then that way we could keep it in a you know folder file forever. <laughs> okay. It's important. So I recall this, right? Let me see if I can do this here. It's been a while.
uh, creating my own version of the kill box here. So I'm going to grab I'm going to grab some of these ideas here, and then we're going to collectively. I'll just see a show of hands where everyone thinks we need to kind of be here. So you know we're kind of aiming for things to be in here, right? The great your things, you know, depending on where they are. So it's like how good is the idea? So do we want to photograph this before we dismantle it? Yeah. Well, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you can see everything on it. Well, we'll get a good compare. We'll be able to zoom in. I should have got it before and after we started sticking everything on it. Okay, so I'm pulling uh I'm pulling from the annual budget. So I've got long-term plan. Okay, where do, where do we think this goes? I would say great. Well, and I'm going to ask a question. I don't know who wrote it, but um, what does that mean, long term plan? Does that mean, does that seem generic or I'm looking for specific things? Or is yeah, it's all the green ones are mine. So the, I, um, I just abbreviated long term planning to ensure that it, it fits. You know, every every year when we do the annual budget, it fits the ten year plan of, within the ten year plan of the budget. So where are we going? Uh, let me go around the room, Nathan. Seems good. Okay, you're good. Yep, me too. Good. Great. Great. Well, I'm like you. I think it's great, but on the other hand, it's so broad. It's probably number one in the whole room right now. We're, yeah, we're just trying to get what we can judge later. It's just ideas. I'd say it's fair. Okay. So I'm going to place it. We're kind of like, I guess I want to be over in here if it's really great. I'm going to kind of put it in the great lukewarm area. Okay. Master plan review. That was mine also. So, you know, the, so the real quick review. So the master plan, we have a water master plan and a wastewater master plan that engineering companies put together and they list the cost, the, the long-term cost of a lot of things. And they also list the priorities. And keep in mind that the, the kicker is with the master plan is as we move forward with infrastructure replacement due to um, over capacity, we actually, the master plan acts as an expert witness to that. Meaning, you know, if a developer comes in and says, hey, why do I have to pay for this? And they said, well, we hired a professional engineering company that says this system's over capacity. So it's a priority of that. And it acts as an expert witness for that developer to say, oh, okay, so you hired a third party who's a professional engineer, and they said, it could, it's going to cost this amount. Okay. So that's why I put the master plan. So I'm kind of messing up my process. Hey, um, Doug, I'm going to have you unmute. I'm going to start with you every time we do this. I'm going to ask for your opinion, and then I'll move to Nathan and then kind of move this way. What's your opinion? Okay. As far as the master plan on the budget? Yeah. I think it kind of drives directly to the long-term plan as well. Long-term plans derived from the master plan and that's what we kind of, you know, develop the annual right. budget on. We want to be, is it great? Is it good? Is it fair? Or do we kill it? <coughs> Just looking for a general opinion right now. I'd say fair. Okay. All right. Oh, well, let's... Okay. Just because I think it's sort of the same thing as long-term plan, I'd say kill. Okay. Well, I, I rather kill the long-term plan than the master plan because the master plan holds up. We'll get court. there. That's what we're going to get. We'll holds see. up in court. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> so it's good. Okay. I say kill too. Same reason. Okay. I say great. Okay. Then I kill the other one. Okay. My my first instinct is to be silly and say kill that sucker. But no, what I'm seriously thinking, and that's exactly the same thing I said with one of my items. And different ways of saying the same thing, and it kind of goes into long term, <laughs> long term. So right now, that's number one on my list. Okay, I'd say it's great. Okay, so I'm going to kind of tilt a little bit. I think we're going to these two seem to go together, so I'm going to stick them together. Does that seem reasonable to everybody? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to grab something here. Um, 
I got staff right sized. Are we lean versus performance, and how do we measure? Doug? I think we are right size, possibly low size. Person so, we have the analytics to prove it. Look, I that's the stuff that this is this is where it, and it's not, nothing on you guys. It's just like we aren't here eight hours a day. We don't see what you see. We don't know what you know. So tell, tell, can you explain that a little bit more? So are you looking for like is this something that we need data for? How are we evaluating this is a good idea? This is something that we need to implement, an idea that we need to follow up on. Well, it helps give guidelines to Jeff for the staff to create the process. Like I just we just made the point. Doug says, I think we are, you know, and, and, and you know, and I understand all that. But the five of us aren't here all day long. We don't know. How do we know? So in other words, contextualize these budget items better for people who are not around. It should be justifiable by the met, some sort of met process with metrics. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where I'm going. That you, you know, since we're not here, we should be able to pick up some sort of the analytics of what we're doing and understand. Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. That that's how that's how it should be. And the problem is, like I said, the staff's doing their thing, but we're not here. We come in once a month and we're supposed to be able to understand that. And I can't, I struggle with it. That's it it's a struggle for me too, but I have to admit, I've popped in a couple of times on staff and they've been very open and helpful with me. I don't know enough to write, ask the right questions, but I feel when I get a better grasp of it, they'll be very helpful for all of this. But that's not the point, you okay. popped in. Yeah. What are you going to do when you're in the board meeting and, you know, the information sitting in front of you? It's not, a, you know, I'm, I'm just saying it should be something we should be able to see on a dashboard through a, through a process that you see on a dashboard that we can all, the, the common truth, it's a truth we all understand. I mean, that's great. I do, I do the same thing. I, I don't, it's it's not about opinions. That's what we're trying to get away from. Opinions are not quantifiable. They are just opinions. This is like trying to create a process that's going to help smooth this out. Opinions are there's something you look at based on what you're looking at with the numbers. You can do what you want with that, but numbers, you know, numbers are what they are. So okay. All right. So Doug, where do you think it goes? Can you repeat it? Yeah, I put staff, are we right sized or are we lean versus performance and how do we measure? Uh, I'm having a difficult time trying to quantify that because it seems like it's a this or that, but then it has to go on the chart. If it, <laughs> for you, it could be a kill. If it, if it doesn't resonate with you, then say it's a kill. I'd say it's a kill then. Okay. So like asking and answering that question, I think that's great. Okay. We got, a, we got a kill it great. I think this is a very important question and it goes back to board education because the board doesn't talk about the Safe Drinking Water Act or the Clean Water Act. And that's our primary responsibility to the public is under the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment is are we protecting the public for safe drinking water and any violation of sewer overflow or that. So that, that's what the staff really focuses on a lot, along with you know, cybersecurity is the same thing. So when, when I look at it as a district manager, you know, I've been in the field for 35 years and I, I work for other water districts. So I compare what we do to surrounding water districts. I have many of friends, all of the surrounding water districts, and I know what they do, they know what we do, and I know how to stay in compliance. Because the last you know, the last thing we want is the issue of boiling water notice or have a storage tank. You know, we, we, have a, we have a lot of storage tanks, a lot more than the many districts our size. We have a lot of equipment. We have tons of equipment. So, so in my opinion, this is, this is a tough one because I think the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment relies on us as certified water professionals, CWP, which is next to my name when I send out email. And I think staffing is critical because we're on the front lines 
of ensuring that we have safe drinking water, that the water is running continuously. We have backup generators. We are able to respond to that. So, so I think I think you know staffing is is very critical. It's great, but I also think you know we, it's part of us educating the board on what we do with that. And I did send out you know a big just a long justification memo on that to the board. So I think it's a great idea. So I understand the, the to clarify the justification. Like I said, once again, he says, in my opinion, in our opinion, that's good. We understand that. And we understand that the need and the necessity and all that. What we're trying to do is, and this is what they used to tell me. It's like, well, how are you guys doing? Well, we're doing a great job because we're keeping this facility open 365, 24, seven, no impacts. Well, that's good. Okay. But that's what we pay you for. That's what they, that's what they literally tell me. That's what we pay you for. And they're like, clap their hands and like, okay. So when we're talking about if we're going to do pay raises or if we need more, or if we need less, how do we know? That's what I'm talking about. There's what we pay everybody for, which is exactly what you said. That's what we do. But how do we just, how do we dis discriminate the other things? How do we know when someone's doing above and beyond or below? Or do we need more? Or do we need less? Or are we right sized? How do you know? That's all. So, so where are you? Where are you on? Great. Great. I'm afraid I'm in kill. You're in kill. We got two kills. Two great. Three. We got three greats. Oh, good. We got good. I'm a good. Good. So I think we are kind of in this zone here. So I'm going to kind of slide it in there. We're a lot of center bullets here. <laughs> okay, uh, we got utilization of staff. That was for me. I think it's virtually the same thing you're saying. Okay. So I, I guess I've just been sitting here thinking about how to quantify things, you know. You know, if someone's in an office, would you quantify number of calls that come in? Do you quantify extra work they do? Um, you know, if they're down, if they're out in the field. You know, so many calls a day equals so many people. I don't know how to quantify it. Well, so so here's the thing I used to, I, I keep going back to the only thing I know is how I spent 35 years. They're like, well, that's great, Jeff. But it's like, if you're writing that check, like say I'm having Nathan come over to my house and he just hands me a bill and it's like, and I'm like, well, and he's like, well, we did a good job for you. Okay. And I'm like, okay, what kind of questions can you ask? What, you know, would you have more questions? Sure. Let's see like how many hours, materials. Yeah. People people tell you what they're doing. And I guess when I'm saying this, we're not saying as a board that you guys aren't doing it. We just don't work like I keep reinforcing this. We're not here. <laughs> we you have to make it for somebody that never sees you. You know, if this the board was in, you know, South America or something like that, and we were chiming in, what could we go by? And that's kind of how you have to look at it. How do you write the story for the district without popping in or whatever? That's, you know, so. Okay, Doug, utilization of staff, what do you think? That's a great. Okay, or can we look, can we put that in? I think it's the exact same thing. So you, is said. this the exact same thing we just yeah, said? I think so. Okay, can we comment? So well, then I must be confused about the last one. It's the same thing, utilization of staff. It's like right sized. It's like so that's utilization of staff. Are we are we lean? Are we fat? Are we right sized? It's it's you know, and then versus the performance, and then how do we measure? It's kind okay, of like, so what would what would great mean in that category? That we're doing great? No, the, the, idea, at, the, the idea to create the metrics or the process for that is a great idea. To kind of uh, drill into that a little bit. I'm trying to, we're trying to give some guidelines for Jeff and the staff to work to. Well, so... What do you think of the matrix in the district manager report that lists all of the emails, customer calls, responses every month, and also the matrix under asset care that lists all the tasks that are done every month and um, summarized yearly? So that so all those tasks list the number of tasks that are completed 
every month and also a customer service response are. So that's that's a that's a matrix. What do you think of that? Well, I think that's a good start. You know, so we used to have the uh, you know, we did everything where the from the crafts to everybody would you had to work off of like work orders, right? So they could see who's doing what. That way we knew how much material we could identify what the bigger problems are like, okay, we're on a lot of water main breaks or, you know, you, there's a lot of discriminators you can put in a work order to identify what that staff member is doing. Now I understand if you're answering phones and that kind of stuff that, you know, <laughs> that's something you got to have somebody working at that level. And that's kind of the one-off thing to me, although it's important to know how much they're doing. Right. So, Am I being clear? I, I warned everybody I'm operating in a very low mental capacity tonight. So if I'm not being clear, I need help. Basically, is the utilization of staff, is that kind of the same thing as the prior one? Yes, I think very similar. So yeah. can we put this in the kill box because we've already got the idea up there? I agree. Okay, well, let me clarify. Kill means that we've already got it. We're going to, it's done it away with. We're not, we're just, we're, it won't, it won't go forward. The kill is like we're done with it. Okay. Use the one that's there. So, or, or could you just put the stickies on top of each other and the same thing? Well, okay, whatever. You could if you want to. <laughs> I'm just, this is how you, you kind of work the process here to kind of keep cinching down. Because yeah. the last couple of ones we've heard have been staff oriented. I think in my mind, they're kind of all the same. And they're all good, important stuff. Well, that, um, that's fine. Then. Yeah. If you think it needs so, to stay up, then it stays up there. Sorry, Jeff. Uh, so you're just looking to see um, whether or not these reports would be useful for the organization. That's yeah, what great it's... means. And kill means, no, we don't need it. Right. So we're trying to gather <coughs> data points to start working a process to. We're not saying we're going down any specific road yet, but we're saying that that's a data point once we're talking about coming up with the process of the annual budget. We're going to consider this. We're going to consider that. We're going to and start figuring out that process. We're not really weighing in on, like we're doing away with something or we're adding something. We're not doing that here. That's not what this is. Gotcha. Minus. Okay, sorry. I, I misunderstood it from the beginning. So thank you. Yep. So essentially here, the topic at hand that we're all putting these ideas on here for is that the board wants to have more information, more data on some subjects when it comes time for budgeting decisions and the sticky notes are the subjects essentially that you all would like to have more or better data presented to you on for these decisions is that right so assume okay. say you run for the board on this next thing and you're elected do we want to have to spend you know years educating you or could we just have a process in place that you would hit the ground running and then we're not torturing the staff yeah. which we do um, because we're coming it, there's not a process it, they're trying to anticipate what they think we want mm -hmm. that's a waste of their time in my opinion have, so, you, yeah. have you reviewed the board packets uh, a couple of them but not because you know there's a yeah. the, you know the district manager report does have two dashboards in there and also, there's a ton of matrix on the budget. Ton, I mean, mm -hmm. all kinds of charts and matrix and explanation about the budget. Yeah, I, I guess it seems like the reason this meeting is happening is because those explanations don't have the context yeah. for regular people to, you know, know whether an expense is exceptional or not, or normal or not, Perfect. or something like and that. And that's what we're going to do. Some yeah. of these other sticky cabs are going to address that. Yeah. So that's what we're getting into. We're trying to help yeah. the district create the process so anybody can sit down here and we can slide over or they can see a dashboard. And you guys take the guesswork. I hate wasting staff time trying to anticipate 
I'd rather than focus on other things. And that if you have a process and everyone understands the process, there's no anticipating. Yeah, they, so we, we created two dashboards back in April and now it's automatic. I mean, the dashboards, we, you know, we were able to generate the same asset care dashboard to customer service dashboard really quick because we did all the legwork already. And then Doug does a fantastic job, not only on customer service dashboards, but also budgeting dashboards. So as we get into more sticky notes, you'll see that come up as is business cases and education of the board and all of that. I think that there might also be something helpful that we could do that would be to break down the crews and their assigned duties, um, to make that transparent to the board. Right. I think, you know, so Sam, it's the thing like, and look, you can look at it two ways, like, oh, we got a bunch of bird dogs, but it's like, like I said, we're trying to. We're the ones that have to sign off on everything, right? So when everybody can see what needs to be seen, like we, we can verify everything is, is quantifiable, so it makes it justifiable. And then you have like if you have your mean or your average, right? Are we there above or below? I mean, it just gives you an idea how are we doing and when we say and it's tough, I mean, it's like, you know, you guys are living this every day, it's your job, right? It's like, well, we're doing great. Well, that's that's an opinion or a perspective. It's like for somebody that's not here, that doesn't answer anything. And that's not calling anybody into question, but it doesn't explain it. Does that make sense? We just need a better way to explain this to whoever's sitting at the board chairs. And then it's, to me, it's, I think it makes a better, justifiable decision. Well, I think also the, what I say about the structure of the crews might give you guys a little bit more transparency into that. You know, where you have your inspection crew, which is two guys who are doing the inspections of the new installation. So you can kind of piece together where where the different parts are happening each day. Right, and that's what I'm talking about. The, we've got the utilization staff and we're talking all that. Are we right sized it? And that's like for everything we're doing. You know, I mean, it's hard to say, what would you do if you're Jeff and you're like, well, I need three more people. Why? You know, they always get the five whys. There's the five whys. Why, why, why? Yeah. And if you're like, well, because we're, you know, and, and if you're just kind of giving opinions, <laughs> that's not going to resonate with people, right? But if you're like, you have your metrics and it's like, we're below the line here, we're below the line here, we're below the line here. You can justify with the numbers and then, then, it's you kind of start taking the opinions out of the equation and it is just about are you okay with running at this level or and if you are then we're going to keep trending in a negative position and it goes on you which would be the board and the corrective thing is to do this and we need this that's your justification and when you're talking about lean or optimization say you're like over here your crews aren't as busy here but then we're doing something over here we're doing an improvement or optimizing what we're doing with the people we have we're optimizing the district and that is also quantifiable and it's justifiable yeah so is this the same thing or the utilization staff is it the same as the last one to me it is and it's mine okay so we'll put that over in the kill for now okay what facilities need replacement and when well that's a great one because it's purple i like it so i pulled it doug oh, oh. We'll, we'll just kind of go around around the robin here doug the idea is what facilities need replacement and when? I think that's great. Okay. Kind of subjective, so good. Okay. I think it's part of the master plan and long-term plan. So it should go on top of the master plan and long-term plan. Okay. I think it's part of long-term planning too. Okay. Good. Okay. But these is the same thing as uh, long-term planning and stuff. Yep. Okay. So, yeah. I agree. Okay, so I will attach this to the uh, long-term planning. They will be together, just kind of a subset of that idea, okay? All right.
Let me get my glasses. You need a different pen. <laughs> it's just a pen. And I just uh, put okay. It says uh, bad, no dollar limit to ask. I put observations down there. So get a put a dollar limit for put a budget on lines of business. Lines of business. Yeah. Okay. So the thing is uh, <clears throat> allocating budget Doug for each line of business annually. Sorry, not so clear. Is that just for capital? No, it's for operating the district. So let's just say if we had uh, maintenance and we had IT, I'm just using these categories. We budget so much annually for maintenance. We budget so much for IT. We're just creating bins for the operations that are have dollar allocations for them. I guess I'm a little confused. Isn't that just the budget process in itself? Okay, so you could say, yeah, you could just say kill or whatever. Okay, I said kill. Okay. okay. Uh, good. Okay, we got good. We got a kill. Great. We got a great. Did I say fair? Fair. Good. Good. I'm a little clear what it is. So. So say the IT department has a hundred thousand dollar budget every year, rather than tell me what you want and we'll budget for. It. Oh, well, fair, good idea. Then. Okay, I would say fair. Okay, all right. Okay. It's kind of like I'm going to kill this myself. I think it kind of goes into the same area that that's redundant. Um, let's take another day. How much infrastructure costs to replace? Isn't that master plan? I was going to say that's redundant. Yeah. And, I, and I knew that when I did it. It's like, yeah. Um, I put in for the uh, annual budget under vehicles. Um, so I put vehicles as the title. How do we justify how many, how long, and can we rent or lease? Just kind of kind of get into the discriminators like for vehicle assets. Mm -hmm. Doug, what do you think of that? I'd say that's good. Okay. Great. You got a good, great, 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 great. Fair, fair, good. Good. That kind of goes here in the middle again. All right. <laughs> well, no, but that's fine. I mean, look, this these will just be stuff we we will translate into developing. That's fine. You don't want to read too much into this stuff. That's the thing. It's just like it's an idea. Can we use the idea to build the process? We're not built. This is not the process. A lot of these are going to overlap. They are going to overlap, and, and we may even get in there and we're like, well, this is, we're just saying the same thing in a different yeah. way. Is it possible we're going to miss something? Absolutely, but that's also when you start working the process, it's kind of like it, it becomes Continuous mathematics and the <laughs> analytics. It's like you will see if you're, if there's a gap, right? If you get a weird number and it starts going funky, you'll know you probably have a, uh, so you're missing something, right? A dark, it's, a, it's a dark hole. So. Okay, timing of replacement cash flow. That would be like for vehicles? Well, one of the things, I, I guess, no. Like, I just talked with Dave, and, you know, we're supposedly working on that $80 million. And to me, I mean, we could have $80 million today, but we couldn't start $80 million of projects just because the district couldn't manage it and the city couldn't manage it. But from my perspective, if we do it based on cash, if we know that we've got two or three or four million dollars every year of cash flow, that would be probably the amount of replacements I would be doing. So I guess it's figuring out potential future cash flows, whether that be via loans or our regular billing, and then setting up replacement really based on what money we think we will have. So would that kind of, can I stick this on top of the master plan and that, I mean, kind of a subset of that? 
I don't know if it's the same thing. Okay. Well, it might not be the same thing because you figure this is about the only time in history that I know that the Bipartisan Infrastructure Act gave the ability for loan forgiveness money that a lot of people are taking advantage of. Like the city of Aurora Water was just on the news two weeks ago. They received $5 million to into a $30 million pump station and loan, loan forgiveness. And we qualify for loan forgiveness. So, so timing of cash flow is we're going to miss the boat if we don't do something to try to get like one or $2 million to help our assets. That's what I'm saying. If we yeah. know we've got that money, yeah, then we can certainly start that process with those things. But say if we got an extra $2 million and we know this year we have $5 million, we can get that amount of work going versus on the years if there's only two or three. Yes. Again, to me, without the cash, Okay, so without the it's a discrete idea, is what you're saying. So I won't kind of okay. So that I hope that helps. So Doug, what's your opinion? And we're still sticking on the subject of annual budget. Yes, I'd say that's that's great. Okay, great. 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 Two grades, great three grades. Good. Good. Great. Great. Well, it's great. But I think it's kind of some the same thing. And, I would say it's great. I, only because I just want to match the repairs with the money we have. That's fine. I'm just going to caution everybody. Don't read too much into these stickies. This is the first. Does it strike you as is it great? Is it good? Is it kill? Just your opinion. You know, with the process will drive it out. Okay, we've got uh, we've got educate the board, Doug. I'd say great. I'm always willing to. I think great. Okay, we got two greats. Great. Three greats. Um, I think we do. I'm on kill. She's a kill. I go with fair. Fair. <laughs> My instinct is kill is heck with that damn board. There's more, more trouble than worth. <laughs> kill. Uh, fair. Fair. So we will put that kind of like over here. All right. So we have loan forgiveness money. That's what uh, Jeff was just talking about with yeah, the uh, infrastructure bill. Yes. Doug? Sorry, isn't that the same uh, thing that Todd was just bringing up? Okay. So yeah, I'll, 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 I'll probably pile them together. I think they're, it's part of that. I don't think it's just that. Okay, I'll, I'll say great. Okay. Three great. Great. Three, Three greats. Fair. Fair. Tremendous. No, great. Tremendous. Well, it's all the same thing, so it's great, I guess. Great. 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 Okay, so I'm going to put those two together. Okay, good. This is working better. Um, I wrote this one. Uh, business cases for spending greater than, and I, I was thinking about that, maybe the $50,000 that we allow the manager, you know, the manager can go spend $50,000 as needed, you know, based on the manager discretion. I'm, I'm saying maybe use that as a delineation, but this might help us with the staff, like if you're gonna go greater than $50,000, say like, what was the IT group? You guys were, there was a room you needed built, right? Or something like that. Uh, there was a budget item for uh, turning that into a server. Right, so I, I'm just talking about that. What was the approximate cost of that to your recollection? The engineering cost, I think was uh, 30,000. Okay, so let's just say everything lock, stock and barrel, it's 100,000 just for, it's not a real number, but I'm using it for here. So then it would be, we would need a business case. Doug? I say that's good. Okay, we have good. It really depends on what it's for, but good. We have two goods. I think it's great. Matter of fact, I think we should have more business cases. We have a great. <laughs> um, good. We have two goods, two, one great, good three goods, four goods. Good. Four, five. Okay, so we have a. You can do it. Here's what I'm doing. I'm fine. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on uh, really limited. Water rates. 
Those are kind How of. How is that controllable? We don't. That's not really that controllable. Okay. So we're talking about water rates, Doug. Um, as far as presenting all the information, I uh, say great. Yeah, that's good. Got a good, great. I think it's great because you know it's a concern of the public, and plus it's a way to raise capital. Okay, two greats, good. Yep. Kill. I don't know if there's action goes on there. Okay. I'd say kill. Two kills. Well, on the one hand, it's what we're all about. It's like the number one. But on the other hand, it fits into everything else. So I'm like greater kill, greater kill. I, I don't know. Uh, there is no Dave Whitman. I'm yeah. a kill. <laughs> I, I think we are too, because I think it's not something we can't control because they just tell us. It's not anything we can manage. But I think it, what you're saying, that will go into the uh, cash flow plan and cash flow, that type yeah. of stuff. So we'll put this in the kill. All right. Tap fees and SDFs. What was SDF again? System development fees. Oh, same as tap fee. Tap fee. Okay. Doug, this is for annual budget. So as far as budgets concerned with tap fees, those are kind of an unknown while we're doing the annual budget. So I'd, I'd say kill. Okay, we got a kill. Kill. Uh, the reason I put it up there is because if we look at the formula and the justification to increase system development fees has a lot to do with the value of our infrastructure math calculation that's approved by the American Water Works Association. And also there's a new, new method approval that was just approved in court that the city of Aurora did based on flow. So Aurora, city of Aurora charged $10 million to Niagara bottling company for two six inch taps. They thought it was plenty of money, but when they came back and looked at it, that actually cost them $50 million because they were using so much water. So there is, there's three, three important things when it comes to system development fees. There's the total value of the infrastructure, the, um, inflationary index, which we used, and also now water flow. So if, if somebody builds a high volume flow on those 59 acres at the Fayette Center, we could go back and use the Aurora model and also the Arvada model and say, hey, we're raising those up because we don't have a whole lot of water and, and Denver water could do the same thing. So that's why I put that on there. It, it kind of correlates to cash flow too, if you want to correlate with that. Okay, what's your your seer great then? Yeah, great. Okay. <laughs> you know, Sam, I'm gonna add you in on this too. Is everyone okay with me just adding yeah, Sam's yeah. opinion? I mean, we've got well, staff in the room. He has to agree with me. Yeah. Well, how much are you gonna pay him? <laughs> <laughs> what would you sort this out? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of wink, but uh, what are you now? I'm gonna just add you in. So what's your opinion? I think with just justification, I think great. Okay. So we got a great care. Uh, kill. Kill. The tap fees. Great. Great. Well, my first instinct was already covered, et cetera, et cetera. But that explanation, I thought was great. Yep. I'm a kill. I actually agree with Doug. It's an unknown. Okay, I'm going to kind of put that in the uh, kind of lukewarm area here. Kind of put that. I'm going to just kind of put it over here this way. We're trying to move that direction. So, all right, um, Karen. That could go with your the other one that you had for. Good. Explain all new items. We just have this. The way I like it, the way the budget is worked out. Doug's got it all laid out, and he tags and explains everything very briefly that is new on the budget. So it brings your attention to it. So I would say put that with your other if you want to put that. Like put a cap on the hundred thousand, like you were saying, but otherwise oh, just type stuff? Okay. yeah. Otherwise, just kill it because it's a. Okay. All right, we got business case here. That was from Jeff. So can we so, just put that on? Okay. We'll put that in the kill because we got that up there. Okay. And then uh, I wrote down process to justify increases in dollars for equipment, dollars for equipment, 
in dollars for manpower. That's probably business case. And business case could also be for people. I mean, I, I think I want to make that clear. A business case is anything over fifty thousand dollars for the district. If it's manpower, if it's equipment, if it's IT, if it's a new truck, if it's a new building. So I'm going to just probably kill this. Does everyone agree with that? Mm -hmm. okay. All right, and then we have a capital plan, which I think we had that up there already. Is Master it? plan, capital plan, long-term planning. Do we all agree with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll kill that. So Sam, do you want to take a picture of this? I will segregate these. So these, all of this stuff is important, but we'll kind of, I'm going to kind of throw these things that were over here kind of put them under the where we thought there was kind of enough rates. Um, so it was stuck together. Okay, Sam, when you take a picture of that and then I will, these are gone. And then what I will do is we will put these all Karen, you're supposed to be helping me out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you're having fun, actually. You're, you should be a black bill, not a green bill. Great. And then we'll put uh, good uh, to infinity and beyond. And, uh, <laughs> uh, it's just capturing the ideas. So we'll take all of these and I will we will save all this. This becomes what we're going to work from. So these will all be under great. And then these will all be under infinity and beyond. Okay. All right. Let's go to like lines of business. This will be pretty easy. So uh, under lines of business, is everyone understanding what we mean by lines of business? I'll go around the room, Doug, or do you understand that terminology? That I, or it's probably, do you understand me? <laughs> I mean, if you could give a brief explanation again, that would be helpful. So I would want, with the district, I want to see the lines of business as being discrete bins, like there would be maintenance, there would be IT, there would be administrative, there would be uh, reactive, I don't know, those kind of things. What are we gonna, what is the district? How many things do we do, right? That are, we could categorize like repair and maintenance, office, IT, that's what I consider. There must be dozens. No, you could, you could kind of glom those things. I mean, we're not that big. <laughs> Well, how many, how many, Sam, how many things, do we, if you understand me, how many it, lines would you think we have? It depends on how finite you want to get, but on a high level, we've got administrative, IT, water, and sewer. Okay. Where, where does maintenance repair fall in there? I mean, maintenance repair overlaps on water and sewer okay. inside of that. Okay. And then, like I said, then we would have, could also have under lines of business, like our vehicles, like fleet, those kind of things. Yeah, it's all asset care. Yeah, so the high levels, high water, levels. water distribution, wastewater collection, asset care, customer service. So with that being said, we're kind of blocking anybody. Anybody want to do a little goodie? Sure. One. Yeah, yeah so, uh, so just slide them out there. Uh, so, I was trying to determine what way of slicing and dicing the different business expenses is going to be most useful for you all for annual or monthly budgeting purposes. So, I know the budget itself is split into many categories. Uh, is there a particular reason why those categories aren't? Working for this? Well, they're fine, but you might see like 70 line items on a spreadsheet. And I would mm -hmm. probably want to see 
some of those glom together, like you could put, I'm just using IT, you could put IT and then you'd have, what is the subset of IT? And then it would be in that bin. And you would have maintenance and sewer and repair and PM and that that's staffing and the equipment and the repair parts, the staffing, the overtime, that's would fall in that bin. Then you'd have vehicles. What are we doing with vehicles? We have vehicles we drive for repair work. We have some that we drive for whatever. They do different things, obviously. Yeah, they all be under water distribution, wastewater collection, all the vehicles. Right. So we it would help us if we knew what all that meant <laughs> and why we have them and what are we doing with it and do we need it and if we do do we have enough and when are we, how are we going to replace it and when yes. all that kind of stuff okay yeah, i see what you're saying i think perfectly good idea uh question would be when we were doing the budget there were a couple items that kind of had foot in different categories like staff like 70 or 35 percent of staff was in one category and 25% of staff was in another, it, it kind of got split into. And that's well, good. That's fine. I, I mean, that's that's all good. And we can get into that. It's, okay. it's just, remember the purpose of this is so the staff can understand what they're working to. They, we're not guessing. You don't anticipate the board's questions. You're already given the answer. We're like on what, Wheel of Fortune, where they give you the answer and you come up with a question or something like that. I don't know. Something like that. I don't and that's that Jeopardy. Jeopardy, Jeopardy. thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Just Are you Alex Trebek? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. So, so Doug, I, I have mine here. It just says lines of business like equipment, staff, IT, infrastructure, capital improvement, staff or maintenance and admin. Kind of, it's just breaking down. It's breaking down or identifying the lines of business. And I think that's what all these are pretty much about. Yeah, we're going to get, we're going to overlap a lot. So I think yeah. we, we can probably make that, these all go together, well, except for this one. I'd say fair, but it will it would be difficult because like Jeff said, um, a lot of people do wear different hats, especially in water and sewer. They are cross-trained and they do a lot of this, a lot of fill and work for other people that, you know, are out, can't be there. If they're on call, they do what needs to be done, whether it's, water collection or uh, sewer di or water distribution or sewer collection. So that one might be a little more difficult in that scenario. Um, and as far as IT, same kind of thing. We have a lot of um, softwares that work for sewer, a lot of softwares that work for water and everybody kind of works with that and IT does all of it. So it, it would be difficult to separate a lot of those parts. Um, but as far as office admin versus, you know, the repair department, uh, that would be easier. So I, I would say fair, I guess. All right. Uh, yeah, it's fair. I, I think it's just subjective from person to person, how they want to divide all of this. Well, I think, I, let me just ask the consensus. So we, we, let me just ask, do we need to have a, uh, a discussion at one of our meetings about what the lines of business look like. How's that for a, what is the lines of business? Well, I, think, you, I think you're going to filter it out real quick. When you say lines of business, are you really saying, are you looking at them as like budget areas? What, when you say line of business? Yes, that's how I look at it. So if, because to me, that's not necessarily line of business. I mean, it's like if there's an IT budget, if there's an administrative budget, if there's a repair budget, if there's a what would you call it then? I'm calling it lines of business. I'm just that's I guess point. when I think of lines of business, I think like I've got multiple products, water, sewer, service fees. I've got three ways I collect money. Those to me are a line of business. Or if I sold products, product A, product B, product C, those are my lines of business. I to me, I, I think more what i'm hearing is is you're looking for budget areas budget bins yes okay so i guess what you're calling a line of business is i'm more correct, looking at as a I budget warned you, warned you, i'm at diminished capacity well, I, like well, I don't bins. know i, I budget bins i'm going to just relabel my budget bins because like i said i i can't be i'm not 
I'm keeping an eye on myself here lately. Okay. I just call it budget bins. What do you think of budget bins, Doug? Yeah, that's, that's great. Okay. Yeah, great. Okay. Sam? Great. Jeff? Great. Karen? I don't know what the difference is that we do now. So, I, so my first instance is kill. Kill, okay. I'd say good. Good. Well, I'd say the same thing as budget categories, which is good. Okay. I'd say fair. Fair. Okay, so we'll put it over here in the lukewarmish good area. All right. All right. Uh, water sales, sewer fees, service. This is all under lines of business. So we've got water sales, sewer fees, service fees, and PM repair replacement. Jeff or Doug? Let me say this again. Okay. Hold on. Hold yeah, on. sorry. So under lines of business, why don't we just call that? Because I had that wrong. We'll call that bins, what, budget bins. How's yeah. that for mm -hmm. budget yeah. areas? Budget areas, budget bins. So the idea here would be that if you had some sort of dashboard, it would be divided into some number of categories to look at, and that these would be what those categories would be, and what everyone would agree they should be split into for slicing and dicing. Yes. Okay. I don't have a cool up there. <laughs> <laughs> I should have. <laughs> uh, start with Doug. <laughs> don't say awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, can you can you skip me on this one? I got a quick emergency. Yeah, sure. Nathan. Thank you. Fair. Sam. Can you read again? Yeah. Uh, water sales, sewer fees, service fees, PM repair replacement. I think that would be good categories to put into that. Okay. Good. Good. Again, I'm just not seeing the difference. Okay. Go no ahead. Okay. Good. Good. I have questions. Uh, when we were doing the budget, I noticed it seemed to be like what you were saying was categories water, sewer, and service. And like 13% of this one, and, and, it, and then all of our businesses got allocated into those bins. And so I was like, okay, that sort of made sense. But then on the other hand, I would sit there and say, what's every, is all of IT together as one bin? Or are we gonna sit there and say, the bins are water and sewer and half of IT goes into one, half of, that, half of IT goes in the other. So I'm just a little confused. Well, it's not you know, like you're severing an appendage, like IT doesn't, now obviously they're here to support this entire district, right? And we have an IT bin that supports this, supports the admin stuff, supports all this kind of different stuff, right? So everything that's IT will be in this, this bin. Right. And it's like, so what do we need? Uh -huh. How do we justify the budget for IT for all that they do? Does that make sense? You have to, then you start understanding, in my mind, this is something I should probably let you explain because you do this daily. So, oh, well, like to me, say in my, an IT budget would have like their salaries. It would have, for example, what they pay for internet connections, what they have in softwares, what they have in equipment. What what are our costs? Like for me, when I look at it in my company, I'm looking at it as how we stack up to prior years is really all how I gauge it. I mean, my view of it is very simplistic. So if, if say we have, I'll just use ours, where we buy um, CAD or Revit software every year and our cost say is $75,000. So that's my thing. Well, all of a sudden if this year it's $87,000, obviously it's gone up to $12,000. I know that, but that's just part again of the budget. I just look at them, I don't, typically break them out that much because I can just look and see what it is. I mean, if we want to put them into the budget bins, we certainly can. Well, that makes um, sense what you're saying because you'd have a staff, you'd have the equipment, the software updates, 
I mean, there's there can, there's all these things that cost to run your IT department. That's your standard. That's your standard mean, right? That's your that's your zero point. Yeah, keep in mind well, too. Well, the continuous improvement is cybersecurity now. Well, I, that's what I'm saying. Then you would have cybersecurity. So we have this thing like we know. Let's just say it costs us a hundred thousand. Just use round numbers. But then uh, the new cybersecurity thing comes online. Yeah. And then we're talking about it's going to cost us another hundred thousand. Then we have to build a business case because it's greater than fifty thousand. Yes. Well, I'll explain my confusion. If anything relating to IT, we want to put that in an IT bin. That's fine. I understand that part. But it looked at at one point that we were breaking things into bins that were kind of water and sewer. And it was like, well, half of IT goes into water and half of IT goes into sewer. And so, like, how am I thinking about this IT, or am I thinking about it water sewer? That's my confusion. I think that there's always going to be a level of confusion because there's going to be so much overlap there. Right. Everybody here, but that's the optimization of work order software that everybody uses. Well, because so it's part of every piece of the operation. Because there's not a ton of employees here, there is a lot of cross. Yeah. Well, he just yeah. spoke to something that makes sense. Now you have, what's the name of that software? Elements is our, our work. So elements you see in work orders, there would be that we, I'm using just a guess number, say 30% of IT is used for water and sewer. You would know that, that you know, to support that, your IT is supporting 30% of that. Okay, so, and that's a good thing to know. You know, if you start, we, we can't, we're not going to come up with everything here, but I mean, that's a good way to a discriminator that you know that 30% of IT does that, and then 40% for administrative. You know, you can understand in a pie chart what IT does and where the bulk of what they do and where it's most important. Yeah, and it, like I said, that makes sense when I saw that budget. It depends on how you want to look at it. You want to compare IT from year to year to year. That's one way of looking at it. If you want to look at water versus sewer, what are the various sub elements that make it into those things? That's another way of looking at it. And, like, and both of them are legitimate, but there are different ways of looking at the, at the picture. And I, like I said, that kind of confused me when I was looking at the, the budget this year. I think that's this idea of what thing goes where. Well, and that's why we're moving into, you know, once we do a deep, we'll do a deep dive into these, probably these two areas, right? That'll probably be the next follow on meetings, is the annual budget and then the budget bins, just trying to use the right terminology. <laughs> that's where all the refinement will happen. Okay. This is just general. I need it at home. Okay. But we need you here. But no, I'm just, yeah. I'm just messing, <laughs> I'm sure I'm just messing with that. Okay. But these are, I, I think it's a good thing. I think if we want, when you get granular, it's going to have, have to look at what's already in there. I mean, we have, you know, like we have an IT. Well, we, we probably have all the data there, but it's just like it needs to be formatted and, di you know, and digestible for the board. I think that's where I'm trying to always go with this. I'm not saying they're not doing it. It's just really hard for me to understand all the time. And we have a CFO in here. See, but I guess I'm so used to looking at financial statements that most of this doesn't mean a whole lot of extra to me. I mean, in all candor. Right. Just you, because I look at it every day. So you, you will be probably pretty helpful because you probably see see what we're talking about. But you already you're with the, the staff. You already but look, they're already doing it. It just needs to be something we can understand. We're not CFOs. We're not the staff. Well, you know, I look back on my city experience. Actually, it was not that bad. On the one hand, you do things like say, here's the police department. See you, Karen. You say, okay, well, the police department, what's in there? Well, then sit there and say, well, it includes a little bit of IT, includes a little bit of HR, you know, all these things that go across the board. And they would sit there and say, here's the HR department, here's the ID department. You can see that as a whole. And then you can also look at the budget and here's parks, here's police, and these things got divvied into those separate silos. So there are different ways of looking at the same things. This is where the analytics come in, I think, because you start seeing the cross-functional applications and they're weighted, right? I, I think we have, if I, 
Are you looking on? Uh, well, I don't understand the context here. So, I mean, so we're talking about IT. Let's just say, like, with the maintenance group, IT is uh, based on the elements, the workforce stuff. We're seeing that maintenance leans on them at 30%. They use IT, they take 30% of the budget for IT. And then, you know, the administrative things, whatever that means is like 40%. And then, you know, the other 30% is on something else. So what we're seeing is like, when you're talking about the police or something, if the police de department shields grows or shrinks, it will affect the IT thing. You have a, an analytical response. There should be a numerical correlation, I, not always, but I think it starts pointing towards it. One of the big, biggest difference that I see um, with what you're talking about versus how the budget numbers are presented now would be breaking employees into specific categories, whereas right now they're lumped under one. Uh, that was a currently when we present the IT budget, all of our IT items are listed under IT, uh, but personnel are currently lumped under. That was one that confused the heck out of me. And it was like employees. You know, sit there and say, here's a staff number, but part of it is assessed the water, part of it's assessed the sewer. It's like, well, that's kind of an interesting way of looking at it. But like I said, different ways of looking at the same thing. Yeah. Okay, because we still got a lot to kind of plow through. You got to stop asking my opinion. <laughs> just give me your first blush of what you're thinking of the, these are just ideas or conceptual things. We're not going to, we're not going to get any, we're not going to hammer anything out tonight. It's just a possible direction, something to kind of scare us when we get into the breakout group. So, Doug, so once again, uh, under budget bins, water sales, sewer fees, service fees, and PM repair replacement. Oh, he's got a oh. bear. No, I'm still here. Okay, Sorry. bear. Nathan, bear. bear. Good. Good. Sam? Good. Good, 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 good. All right, reoccurring <laughs> expenses, um, utilities, uh, subscriptions, memberships, regulatory fees. Fair. Fair. Good. Good. Fair. Fair. Good. 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 I could care less. Kill, 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 kill. So we've got a probably an affair. Okay. Can I make one quick comment? Sorry, take a Remember, utilities are very important. If you, you know, we're we're suffering the same thing as you know. My, I got you know the natural gas went up sixty percent. So you're gonna you're gonna start seeing that you know the utilities. You know, if you look at Kazon, is a quick hitter to control waste, and one of the biggest thing is energy. Energy is always a low hanging fruit. So, you well, know, we just have really two locations that are heated this and that plant. Well, yeah, I'll yeah. So, it. natural gas is a big, but electricity is huge because of our pump stations. So, you're right. So, yeah, natural gas is one up, but electricity could go up too. Is it anything we can control? Oh, yeah. But we'll get into that as we, that's part of continuous improvement. <laughs> so, I'm just right. saying that. Yeah, that's, look, we, everything yeah. is about. Lean Six Sigma or whatever is about continuous improvement. Yeah. But you have to establish the baseline to know what you're measuring against. Are you same, better, or worse? The goal is to get better with what you have. And then as you start to, you know, getting better and all, you know, you're leaning things out, you will hit some point that it's like we can get better, but to, to, to get to this next level. Now we understand the analytics underneath it of what is it going to take probably to optimize or go to the next level. And keep in mind, one analytic was, you know, we buy energy from a solar farm and Doug crunched all those numbers a year ago, but it keeps reoccurring. So if, if we have a matrix to say, you know, every, you know, every part of the budget is, hey, this is the energy from the solar farm. It's less than what we're paying for kilowatt hour from Excel. So it's, we're actually saving money. So that's just one example of continuous improvement. And the board sees that right away, so there's no explanation. Okay, that's more important than I thought. Okay, so but there's there's more energy up there. Yeah, fuel energy. That's why I take away my fuel. Okay. I thought we already answered. I, I lost track. We get we get sidetracked. I lose track of what we're doing. It's all fair and good. Okay. 
All right. All right. Um, we have lines. This is lines of biz or uh, legal. It's kind of the same thing. That's good. There's legal on there. That's good. Some of the stuff we might have missed. Uh, energy, water leaks. That would go under probably the reoccurring expenses and utilities and subscriptions, et cetera. Does everyone agree? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Compliance, safety, supplies, and fuel. Doug? I'd say that would be just included in the, the budget items. So, okay. kill. 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 Uh, I can see killing it if it's covered by the other items, but okay. kill. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of those things overlap. Okay, fair, fair. Repetitious. Kill, okay. kill, kill. We got to kill. Okay. All right. Uh, we got staff, IT, water district, wastewater, and equipment. Not overlap. More overlap. Okay. Right. So we can. We think we've yeah. got that in there. We can just kill that. And then we've got generators, tanks, SCADA. Contractors and legal, I think we'll put that on the staffing, um, the, the bins type deal here. I mean, it's. It, I think it's just things we didn't yeah. see in there. Possible bins. Same thing with cybersecurity, asset. You know, we'll get to it. All right, I'm gonna put cybersecurity with this too. IT. And now we've got asset care. Do you wanna give a, a high level explanation? Well, it kind of covers it's it's like a topic that covers a lot of this overlap we already have. It covers equipment, SCADA, you know, PMs, everything really, all our assets, water distribution, wastewater collection. So but it's it, in it, itself, it's a program, it does something, right? Yeah, it we has a function. Yeah, we, we we like to refer that's part of you know, the dashboard we give you is titled asset care because it covers everything a lot of people do every day, taking care of our assets. Okay. Doug, asset care. Yeah, I agree with what Jeff said. Well, he didn't give me an opinion. It was he gave me a description. Oh, sorry. Okay, kill. Kill. Seems broad. Kill. 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 Fair. Fair. In it as much as I'm reading it as another way of saying infrastructure maintenance and stuff like that, I think it's redundant, in which case I would kill it. But on the other hand, as far as the general subject matter, it's really important to me. I agree. Fair, fair. I think we keep it. Uh, we can parking lot, parking lot back, but put that in the fair. I, I have. It's okay if I give you two, two more. I mean, they might overlap, but so we have building infrastructure. Yeah, that's part of asset care too. And then these these are kind of important, but I don't. They might be overlapped also because they're, they're high cost. So building infrastructure, Doug? I'd say that's covered in the asset, um, or asset master plan, sorry. Okay, so what's your kill? Flavor? Kill, 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 good, good. In it, in it as much as a repetition, kill. Kill, kill, kill. Okay, we got meters online and cellular endpoints. Doug, I think that's good. Hey, we got a good. You got a kill. Good, oh, good. Yeah. I'm sorry. Good. We got a good. It's great. You great. Good. Good. I see they're just more of the assets, so I don't see where it's different. Well, then we can make a comment real quick. Just two sure. seconds. Please, is, sorry. Yeah. So picture this: when we get into continuous improvement. Let's say we convert all of our meters to this online reading and they function very well, where the batteries are functioning, the endpoints are functioning. Now it overlaps into staffing. Everything starts to overlap because there's a lot of time spent on getting these cell endpoints. There's a lot of money spent on these cell endpoints. You know, it's like $600,000 a year. So once, once we're not spending that much money, we're running more efficiently, 
we're saving water, and now we're saving staff time, and we're shifting staff, and and we're saving everything on fuel costs and a lot of other costs too, energy costs. And you know, you go back to we can control energy through pumping. So if we're controlling a lot of water leaks, we're pumping we're we're pumping a lot less water. So th this this is a big cost that leads to everything that over overlaps. It's it's like the future. It's like this is this is this is we're plowing a path on something new here at Green Mountain Water. A lot of water systems do not have this luxury. Uh, good. Good. Oh uh, yeah, good, good, good. Okay. Then the final one is water main breaks. Doug. Good. Mm, good. Good. Great. Great, 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 good, good. What are we saying about the breaks? Is it more like we had one? Or are we saying we're spending a lot of money on them? I mean, okay, I'll, I'll make the comment. So the comment goes like this. Water main breaks um, are a reason why we have so much equipment. We have a lot of equipment and we have aging infrastructure. So everything overlaps. So, so if most of our infrastructure is between the age of 40 and 70 years old, and we have ground sh shifting because of where we're located, so now we develop matrices on water main breaks where we get into more detail. Right now, you're just getting a number and an explanation that we think it's um, shifting soils. So we dig more into that, and then we improve it by installing flexible PVC pipe where we have less breaks. And then in the future, if we, if we show through um, scorecarding, dashboarding, hey, you know, for all these years, we averaged 30 water main breaks, and now we're down to five. Guess what? We don't have to buy equipment. It, it overlaps to, we don't have a good business case to buy expensive equipment and, and we have more opportunity to shift staffing. So that's why water, water main breaks are critical. Okay. I'm gonna start over again on water main breaks. Doug? Good. Okay, we got a good, we got another good. We got a great, 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 but maybe we gotta have Mr. Tyus answer first on these. <laughs> Seriously, to give us understanding as we go around. Well, I think he got, I think he gave a pretty good explanation. Well, for, that, for that one. I understand, yeah. On the next ones and stuff. Cause yeah, it's been swaying my vote every time. So I find out what- Well, this what, is what, look, once we are into that breakout level, this will, it will come out. All right. Like I said, we're not solving it here. We're just, it's just, coming up with concepts to dump into the next meeting and what this will mean. And then we'll all kind of understand it. And then we'll just kind of like put it in its right place. So. Well, I think it's very important, but I kind of see a part of our asset infrastructure planning it kind of goes hand in glove. So everything in this district okay. will have a percentage of the other bin. That's why I'm trying to say, I think in the analytics, you understand the value of which each one of these bins, and it kind of shows you the water main break if you are pulling from 30% IT and then next year it's going down to, you know, you can start to see how water main breaks affects the operation overall of the district. Are we getting better, worse, or same? And then Jeff can figure out or the board will see, well, maybe we don't need to allocate so much into water main breaks because our capital infrastructure plan replacement is starting to pay dividends. You can see the, you should be able to see the effect of everything you do at some point. Water, water main breaks too are directly correlation of over capacity. So, you know, if we're, we're popping water line, popping drinking water lines along Union and they want to build out at Fed Center, we're going to go back and say, hey, we're, we're over pressurized already. We're pumping everything. Our pumps are running 24 seven. We're over capacity and we have water main breaks. It costs a lot of money. So, if you want to tighten the system, we have to increase the diameter of these pipes. It's going to cost X amount of dollars, plus increase the amount of water storage tanks and pumping. And then when you get into pumping, you get into more efficient motors and more efficient variable speed drives that reduce the energy cost too. So you tie it into one project. So that's why this is so important where it overlaps. Okay. Very big. I know, but that's not under. I say great. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go with great. I don't know what Dave, I don't like to create your own, <laughs> your own area. Okay. All right. So, Sam, do you want to come up and take a picture of this? And I'm going to put under this, we'll call this the business bins. 
I think that's the simple explanation. So we're showing all of this here. And then Jeff, you'll just keep this with all the stickies on it. Oh yeah. Okay. We'll put do not touch. We'll take a picture of it to you. All right, last one. This is on the monthly budget. So the things I guess people want to see improvements on, uh, this one, it says buildings, security, safety, roof, structure, grounds, and access. Doug? Uh, hold on, I better go, let me, let me scratch that. I'm gonna pull Jeff, because it's probably a good idea. Explain explanation. Yeah, so um, one, one thing we really want to improve on, and more, or Doug does do a good job, is we want to provide the board with uh, more explanations on the monthly budget. I know Doug is, is continuously improving on that too. So that way that way it's quicker and easier. So when you see checks, you say, oh yeah, here's, here's a check for this. Yeah, we know what that is. We already reviewed it. So that's, that's why I put explanations on there along with, you know, anything adverse that could be like, hey, why are we paying this much for this landscaping? So explanations of that, that monthly. So it's always in front of you and you can review it. So I'm beginning to think this is probably a whole redundant thing. Uh, what does this sound to you guys? If we come up with these business bins and we have allocations of funds for each one of these bins, then Doug can start tracking that. We can kind of project like if you have 100,000 over 12, you're what, what is that about 80 some thousand? I'm just or 80,000 a, a month, right? And you can kind of see if you're above or below the line. Are you going to are you going to hit your mark on the budget or not? I, I think that this the annual budget set up on a chart, and you spread that over twelve months. Now we know it, nothing's linear, right? Some months you're you're going to be heavy, and then other months, you know. But that will, the graph will start intuitively picking that up. Hopefully, with the analytics, you'll start tuning the analytics on that. Is that the right word? Uh, I mean, you know, we need to get a lot more precise about exactly how this would be set up to be sure. That's what I'm going to want to lean into you. So right. I, I, are you kind of seeing some of this direction here? I mean, if we break this out into bins and we come up with allocations of funding for these bins, that should create charts for each one of these bins, right? Um, charts. Yeah, I mean, assuming that these bins can be broken out in terms of accounting and, you know, right now the budget has the different bins that things are already in. Right. So it would be a matter of, you know, taking apart those bins and creating our bins that we define in whatever way is useful for our business purpose. And then, yes, you could set different uh, thresholds for each bin. I'm not sure how that process would exactly go. I had on my little sticky note there that, uh, you know, these expenses need to be contextualized, both in terms of historical trends, other districts that might be similar, uh, alternate options, uh, that sort of thing. So, you know, somehow the thresholds for each bin could be established. And then as long as each expense that comes in is assigned to the proper bin, then yes, over time you could determine if uh, you know those expenses are staying within those thresholds that were defined. I just think it might be a little, I'm not sure how one would go about, if you're going to make these bins that are going to work separately than how standard accounting practices would split things up like they are for the budgets, uh, how are we going to keep track of that in a way that's going to be consistent, I guess? I think whatever we set out to do, we stay with it so we have consistency. So say we did it 
this year, and then we start going year over year, mm -hmm. you do start to see, I just like to be able to trend mm -hmm. something. Something means something to me, you know, and you could, it's all to your point in the context of the, the data that you have, mm -hmm. but you can at least see how something's trending. Do you agree? Yeah, it would need to be categories that don't split across multiple if possible. So, you know, like we're hearing about how, you know, sometimes uh, resources, some are in water, some are in sewer. You know, uh, once you, if you're gonna, if the bins are made, they need to be made in such a way that it would be very tough for expenses to come in that wouldn't fit in one of them, I guess. Uh, this is, I guess, maybe discussion for another meeting, but you, I think you're you right. know, uh, analytics is all about being very, very precise and being very, very detail oriented. So, you know, with a lot of these, uh, if set up right, analytics could answer a lot of these questions, but you need the buy in from everybody to say, okay, these are the right bins to be making. These are the right uh, allocations for how much each bin should be. And we determine that by methods that we agree on. You know, there's a lot of questions to get answered before you get the dashboard and, you know, to make sure that everybody who would use the dashboard agrees because, yes, we want it to be a single source of truth, but, you know, aside from just being raw numbers, you know, it has to have a consensus that people agree that, yes, these are the metrics that we need to be tracking. These are the things that are relevant uh, and organizing them in this way is the way that we want to do this. So, uh, you know, overall, absolutely, if everybody agrees on the business bins and they're set up in such a way that any expense that comes in can pretty much unambiguously go into one of these bins, like the miscellaneous bin is like less than 10% of expenses or something like that, you know, uh, and everybody's on board with using it, that's fine. But I mean, at Farmers, there's a graveyard of dead dashboards that at one point people thought this was a great idea to put this dashboard together like this. And then, you know, the business moved on in some way. So, uh, you know, these are the things that, uh, you want to be very careful about when building something out like this, because while an IT team certainly can build something like this and the structure can be set up to, you know, allocate expenses in such a way, you know, it, it has to be built to last and it has to be something that people are going to five years from now be saying, you know, it's valuable that these expenses are split up in this way, because otherwise what ends up happening is the dashboard just sort of dies and the work that went into it doesn't pay dividends you know yeah, that's why you're here i think you know I, I i want you to help weigh in on this and then i hopefully you're starting to see the, the push pull here you know the staff and the board maybe we can well let me let me comment so there's some important very very important things that we have to make aware of number one we're governed by colorado special district laws and so we just we have to meet our budgets like for example i if i ask doug hey can you put an extra hundred thousand dollars in contract costs Doug's going to kind of tell me no, because we'll have to raise the service charges to our customers. So we're, we're, we're a lot different than Coors, Farmers, and everybody else, because mm -hmm. we, we Doug, you know, Doug already has the budget, you know, review the budget packet. He already has a really good job of bins, categories, and tracking it and controlling it to meet, because we have to, we have to put our budget, we have to publish our budget under Department of Local Affairs. And if, if you go to the Department of Local Affairs, you can pull up budgets for a long time. So, you know, that means the budgets, you just can't, in order, just like us, we're, we're, we're governing all these open meeting acts. And if we're going to, we're going to have hearings and everything else. So if, if it's not, you know, the budgets are pretty solid, meaning, you know, if we're going to look for an extra $1.8 million, we, we're going to generate that by raising water rates. And then we're going to send out a water rates card to justify their customers. And, and then we're going to ask for a hearing for our customers to see it. So, yes, we, we, we could, we have always have continuous improvement of how we present the numbers, but the numbers are pretty lock solid year after year because we're, we're under a lot of watchdogs. Does that make sense? So that's fine. And those are what you call monuments. There's things you can't do anything about. They're untouchable. Yeah. They, they are what they are. You just, you know, what you do what you can with what you have. And that's, yeah, we, we, that's if we want to increase money, we, there's, you know, we have to get board approval. The board has to get public hearing approval. There's a lot to it. So, but see, see, Jeff, that's always the thing. I mean, I'm being the devil's advocate here. 
government is always used to always asking for more money. And then you have this paper thing where if you don't, then, you know, you kick back. It is, you should. It's money not used and it's the taxpayer money, not the government. So that's kind of the methodology I'm not comfortable with. It's it's about being good stewards with the money. So, I, so that's, that's why we published the chart up here to show, you know, the chart says it all. You know, if you read that chart, that shows we are good stewards because we're, we're, we're providing water and sewer at a very low cost compared to the surrounding areas. Right. And Be before I lose my thought, let me, let me chime in. Um, I like what Nate was saying there. And one of my pet peeves over the years at looking at various organizations, is I want to do historical trend lines. That's good. In order to do that, it's got to be apples to apples. You know, you got to do, you can't be mixing it up. And if somebody's good about keeping the same numbers, in the same categories from year to year, it works. My frustration was every few years, somebody would sit there and say, oh, this category needs to be broken up into a couple other things or a couple other categories needed to be combined. And next thing you know, you don't have that apples or just comparison. And that really messes up the historical trend lines. So it's like, whatever we do, pick good categories that we can continue for years and years without changing. So they mean something from year to year. That's, yeah, that's the, my, the categories, my. that's why I said the budgets are published on the Department of Local Affairs for that reason. So we have complete transparency to show we're consistent year after year after year. So you can go back many years if you want to pull up all those records. And well, it sounds like we probably have to use the other categories other groups are doing. If we're consistent with the rest of the state and we're consistent with ourselves, then the numbers have meaning. But it sounds to me like we have 80% of what we what we need already in place. So it agree. sounds like there's just a lot of it's there already. Well, and I that, hate to reinvent the wheel. All that would be great, except when it comes time for the annual budget, no one's acting like we have 80% of this down. I'm just saying, what do we need to do to improve the process of approving the annual budget to communicate to the staff so they are not wasting time anticipating what we're going to want? Well, this with is the opportunity to literally tell them we want this, and then that should break down into something that comes out monthly, mm -hmm. and then the staff isn't anticipating anything. They yeah. know what we're wanting. Yeah, I'm not opposed to this, but I'm just wondering if it wouldn't work in our favor to have the staff provide us this information as a forecast a half year in advance. And they, then we have time to develop questions and narrow this down. They kind of do. I mean, you know, it's like, it's the data dump you get all the time. Yeah. I mean, they do put out, that's what I'm talking about, the anticipatory level of the staff. They flood data on us, but it's like, they're like, well, we're not sure what uh, Roger wants or what Karen or Jeff. So they have to like do a huge data dump and that's a lot of work for a staff. And sometimes it means nothing. Sometimes it means everything. It's better to, to always optimize is be very specific about what your expectations and what you want. And to what Nathan said, we're working from the same truth on all sides. Nothing's in question. We all understand. And it's readily accessible. Okay. Which, which, what, which what Dola wants us to do, you know, certainly. Transparency, same, consistency. And under Colorado Special District laws, we have to present the, the first draft budget by October 15th. So I'm just saying it'd be so much better. We waste so much time going over all that stuff. So could we do that before whatever it is, October 15th or whatever date you yeah. just gave me? Would it be just thinking out loud? And Doug, are you still there? Yes, sir. So the information you've been providing us, and, and I'm trying to learn more about this, do you feel, and you is, has it been adequate? One, do you think it's adequate for our needs on the board? And two, how much of a burden is, is it for you and your office to provide this? As far as monthly reports, it's not a burden. That's what I do. Um, the annual budget, as far as presenting it early there, earlier than October, it's, it's not going to be accurate. You're going to have a lot of a lot of miscues, a lot of projections that might be completely out of whack. It's just too early in the year. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I want to kind of wrap this up. I think we're, we captured these two main things. I think we kind of all see where we're going. Um, I would certainly hope you would, 
you know, stay on the team. Um, because sure. I would, you know, I think you're important. Everybody's got an important part to this. So um, if everyone's okay with it, we've broken it down into basically uh, the annual budget and identifying business spends. That will be our focus on the next two things. So I think the next meeting will be the business spends. Well, does that sound good to everybody? Sounds so reasonable, yeah. We identify what all these things are. These like there's some things we have to be careful of. They're they're like unmovable objects because of legal stuff with state and federal. We need to have Nathan here to help us with what is going to be valuable in terms of setting up analytics in these dashboards so we don't end up with a graveyard of dashboards. And to Dave's point, that we are consistent. We're, we find a good tool that the staff and the board is comfortable with going forward on. And then when you're comfortable, then you will have consistency. So we have a first year, you have two years, five years from now, you get some nice trending things going on. You can kind of, I believe in that stuff. I live and die by that. I absolutely believe in this stuff. And uh, I think it's really important. So with that being said, I'll just uh, go around the room and get final opinions and we'll close it out. Doug, do you have any closing comments? Uh, no, just ready for uh, the green year old details to get into all this. Okay, thank you. Nathan? Yeah, it just sounds like uh, you all want to be able to have context to be able to make your budgeting decisions quickly when it's time for annual budgeting and uh, save staff time on figuring out what you're going to need to make those decisions. So that can be streamlined uh, with a dashboard, uh, maybe with uh, line items for major expenses. I think that'd be, uh, that'd be useful. Yeah, and that would generate a business case and then the board either thumbs up or thumbs down and it goes into the budget or it doesn't go into the budget. Okay. And to get this high level, there's a lot of subjective terminology that kind of has a lot of overlap, I think. As they're able to refine things more, get a clearer view of, of, of how we want to set things in a granular manner, I think we'll, we'll get a lot stronger with it. Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's exciting times because you know this this will help everybody come together on this continuous improvement. And it, I just love dashboards too. Just you know, you should see the dashboards they were water puts out. They're beautiful. So It'd be nice to, you know, as we move forward to this, is actually buy software to generate those type of dashboards, especially once we get these matrix. That way, we just put it up on the screen, you, you'll see everything. So it's that's nice. something maybe, maybe you guys are, you know, could collaborate with Nathan or something yes. like that and work with. I don't think we need to yeah. get into that later. Any closing comments? No, I think it's great. Thank you. Thank you for participating. Thank you, Nathan. Sure. Okay. Roger. Uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to play pay closer attention to Doug's monthly reports and the manager's reports and the dashboards and try to understand it more at that level so I can be more of a contributor here. But it sounds to me like there's just a ton of really good information already available and that we're pointed in the right direction. Um, so I'm going to study it further, probably take the opportunity without popping in, but maybe scheduling with Doug occasionally just to ask questions about some of the things I see in these reports. Well, I understand your role as a board member. So, you know, we've got elections coming up, say Todd doesn't get reelected and we don't have somebody that can just look at a budget and it's like, you know, reading the funny paper and all of a sudden you're doing what Todd did. And then what Todd made look easy, does it become complicated or, you know, is it something you can process? He's smart enough. I, I, I'm not doubting he is. I'm just saying, I'm actually, I would struggle with it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> funny pages. Okay. I can do the funny pages. So, Doug, if that works for you, though, I may occasionally schedule an appointment just for a half hour and go over some of it. More than welcome to. Great. Thank you. Okay. Dave, closing comments? No. Todd? I have none. Okay. I would like to move to adjourn the meeting. I will uh, second that. However, yes. however no. would you entertain a couple minutes for those subject matter? It's not on the agenda. Can we do that? Nope. Okay. And we didn't put it at the beginning, so you could have added it, but I didn't think about it till later. Um, it's the sort of thing 
I went watch it next door with all the stuff about the bridge. And so lots of input going in and out and some things have come up, but I thought share with you guys as an idea. I'm going to say no, because I, I'm just cautious when we don't have Dylan here, we did add it this? to the agenda and can, it's not on the agenda. Can I ask you to yeah. ask Dylan the question? You can ask Dylan. Okay. I, just because I have, look, the whole thing president is only for the decorum of the board meetings. I carry no more sway than anybody else here, guaranteed. Rightly so. We everybody has a one fifth authority here. That's why you need to form. So everybody has on the board has equal access, no matter what, and should and does. Well, and part of this is a thought that I would like to share with everybody. But of course, I can't do it outside a meeting. Only in meetings can we share. So you can share with Dylan and have him pulse it out to the directors. Okay. That's that's okay. how we've done things. Okay. You know, if you have ideas. You know, you can certainly, you know, talk to directors one on one. Can't no more than you can have three. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. You know, and bounce things off. But do we have a sense of when we'll do the next business bucket or whatever it's called? Well, I didn't want to say anything based on the temperature in the room at the kickoff of tonight's meeting. There could be additional, you know, meetings around that issue. So I'm going to try and leave our calendar open. Yeah. Next meeting is February 14th. So the next board meeting is February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day. It is a possibility. I'm not, I should be here, but that is the possible date of my dad. That's what the funeral director was calling me. That's what that phone call was. So I'm trying to, I'm having a hell of a time, believe it. Everything's hard anymore. You can't even bury somebody. Like it's nothing is easy. <laughs> it's an, almost impossible. <laughs> your mom just passed away too. Right? Yeah, I lost my mom in October and then my dad. So was your dad a vet by chance? Yes. So it seems like Fort Logan would be easy, but he's yeah. being buried with my mom at Crown Hill. Oh, okay. There. There's nothing easy. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, you know, my father passed, so we took him to Fort Logan and it seemed to work out pretty smooth, but you don't have that option. No. You know, you've grown to Crown. Yeah. 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 So, all right. Sorry for your loss. Well, thank you. Know, it is. It is. It's totally. How old was you doing? He was 87, you know, just pretty good. He was the last, I don't know, the last month he was in and out of the ER and hospitals and stuff. I mean, he was so beat up. I brought him home personally Friday night, just got him out of Denver Health. And I looked at him and he's just, he looks like he, you know, somebody like it beat the hell out of him. And you know what? He lost my mom. He's depressed about yeah. that. He's in a assisted living. You guys understand you start surrendering control of your life the older you get like that. And it, my dad is very, was very personal, you know, doesn't like people messing with him. He's yeah. just, especially from, I, I'm that way. I don't want a lot well, of One of the interesting factoids is for the average American, 50% of their total lifetime health costs will be incurred in the last month of life. Yeah, I believe that. So long story short, I brought him home and uh, Friday night and he died Saturday morning. He got up. Should we end got the meeting and we'll discuss this? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I, we had a second discussion. No discussion. All in favor of adjournment, say aye. Aye. aye meet, uh, meeting is adjourned at 8.29 p.m. Thank you, everybody.